Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is Final Soldier for the PC Engine. This is a 1991 release that was developed by Now Production and published by Hudson Soft, and it was later re released on the Virtual Console in 2008 on the Wii and 2014 on the Wii U. It features a story about a race of biomechanical creatures from the future that have conquered the Earth and have traveled back to the past to cement their dominance. So it's up to you and your specially engineered Dryad fighter ship to take on this alien menace and wipe them off the face of the Earth. If you've played the other games in the series, Superstar Soldier and Soldier Blade, then the gameplay here shouldn't be much of a surprise. It's a top-down shooter with seven stages and a bunch of different weapon power-ups that you can pick up to change your ship's attack patterns, and these include things like lasers, spread shots, and flame shots, as well as support items like homing missiles, energy shields, and extra attack drones that follow your ship and double as your super bombs. The difference here, though, is that you actually have the option to choose what kind of weapons you want to have access to before starting your game, an option that you don't have in either of the other two games. So there's a wide variety of weapons and power-ups, and the gameplay itself is outstanding with ultra-tight controls, fast gameplay, and plenty of challenge. I'd say it's definitely the easiest of the three soldier games, but it's still no walk in the park. Plus, the graphics are absolutely beautiful with some colorful and detailed stages and some great enemy designs and a high energy soundtrack that really helps push the action forward. Top to bottom, this is a shooter that I can't really find anything to complain about. It's Final Soldier and it's awesome. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Ninja Ryukinden for the PC Engine. This is a 1992 release that was developed and published by Hudson Soft, and it is indeed the PC Engine port of the original NES Ninja Gaiden, and it does feature the exact same story as its Nintendo counterpart, with Ryu Hayabusa on a mission to avenge the apparent death of his father and save the world from an impending takeover by the demonic ruler known as Jackie O, complete with cutscenes to move the plot along that are basically the same as the original, albeit with updated visuals. And that's pretty much the entire game in a nutshell. Just take the original NES game and give it a graphical upgrade and reworked soundtrack and you've got yourself a very enjoyable action platformer for your PC engine. And though I don't think it plays quite as well as the NES version, it is still pretty damn good. Each stage is exactly as you remember it in terms of platforms and enemy placement and all of the classic bosses and items are here as well. It almost makes you ask, what the point of porting the game was if there were literally going to be zero changes made aside from some alterations to the graphics and sound. The difficulty has also apparently been tweaked a bit, though I still find this to be a really tough game, and there is an unlockable English option with some slight differences in dialogue from the NES version. As far as the graphics go, they are pretty nice except for the jerky scrolling effect, featured in certain areas, and the soundtrack, while also not quite as good as the NES soundtrack, still sounds great. So in the end, what you get is a game that doesn't quite live up to the original, but is still pretty damn good in its own right. If you absolutely love Ninja Gaiden, the Ninja Ryu Kinden on the PC Engine is definitely worth playing at least once. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is Star Paroger for the PC Engine CD. 
This is a 1992 release that was developed by Kaneko and published by Hudson Soft and in the same vein as the Parodius series, which lampoons the Gradius games. This is a lighthearted and comical spin-off of Hudson's Star Soldier series, which was intended to be released in North America at one point, but was unfortunately cancelled, although it was eventually ported to the Wii Virtual Console in all regions in 2008. Being a spin-off of Star Soldier, the gameplay is pretty much exactly what you would expect from the series, so if you've played Super Star Soldier or Final Soldier, just give those games a new coat of pastel paint and you're good to go. This is a very fun shooter with smooth controls and more challenge than its cutesy graphics would lead you to believe. You have three different ships to choose from, which include the original Star Soldier ship, a giant Bomberman mech, and perhaps coolest of all, a giant flying PC engine, and each ship has its own unique weapons and even unique power-up icons. So for example, when piloting the PC engine ship, all of the power-ups come in the form of little hue cards, which is a very nice touch. You get eight stages in total filled with unique enemies as well as a varied assortment of boss battles with everything from giant snowmen and crabs to the evil star brains from the Star Soldier series, and you even get some bonus stages thrown in for good measure. All in all, this is a fantastic shooter that I go back to on a regular basis, and the visuals and sound are both top-notch as well. This is a very bright and colorful game with loads of detail in every stage, very cute character designs, and a great light-hearted soundtrack that really ties everything together. If you're a shooter fan and you're in the mood for something especially fun, check out Star Peroger. It's awesome. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Akumajo Dracula X Chi no Rondo for the PC Engine CD. This is a 1993 release that was developed and published by Konami, and it was later re-released on the PSP, and through that and emulation, it's pretty easy to give this game a try, but at the time, the only way to play this one was on the PC Engine, or eventually you could play the inferior port to the SNES. This is more of a collector's item now, but it's still an amazing game and well worth playing for fans of the series. It's essentially just like playing one of the classic 8-bit Castlevania games, but with some improvements made to the gameplay and some very much improved graphics and sound. It's missing the 8-directional whipping from Super Castlevania 4, which I think it could have benefited from having, but the game is designed as such that it doesn't really suffer for it. Also, this is the first game where sub-weapons drop on the ground whenever you pick up a new one, giving you the opportunity to pick it back up if you want to hang on to it, which is awesome. I always hated having a fully powered-up weapon on one of the other Castlevania games, only to lose it when I accidentally picked up a weapon I didn't want. Also, there are no sub-weapon multipliers this time around, but you do get to use the awesome item crash abilities, which are especially useful against bosses. Overall, the gameplay is solid with responsive controls, very good platforming, and some epic boss battles. Throw in multiple branching paths, various maidens to find and rescue, a very fun additional playable character in Maria Renard, and what you get is one of the best playing Castlevania games ever, complete with really beautiful graphics, kind of cheesy, but ultimately entertaining cutscenes, and one of the best soundtracks in the entire series. This game is seriously all positives, whether it be on the PC Engine, PSP, or by some other means, you owe it to yourself to play through this one at least once. It's Dracula X Rondo of Blood, and it's an absolute classic. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Double Dragon 2 for the PC Engine CD. 
This is a 1993 release that was developed and published by Nagzatsoft, who ported a lot of Technos Japan's NES games over to the PC Engine, including River City Ransom and Nintendo World Cup, so it's not really a surprise that this is a port of the NES version of Double Dragon 2 instead of the arcade version. It features Billy and Jimmy Lee on a mission to defeat the evil Black Warriors criminal organization and avenge the death of Billy's girlfriend Marion, who you might remember as the girl who gets punched in the gut at the beginning of the first game, and she just can't catch a break. The controls here are the exact same as the NES version, so depending on which direction you're facing, the two face buttons will have you punching and kicking to the right and or left. You also have your jump kick ability and tornado kick intact, as well as a variety of weapons to utilize and two-player co-op. The controls are responsive, the challenge is fair, and the gameplay is very satisfying. The main difference in this version is obviously in the graphics and sound. Everything is way more colorful and detailed than the NES version, so even though the stage layouts are the same, the visuals are different enough that they feel like completely different stages in some instances at least. Also, this being a PC Engine CD game, it just had to have an assortment of anime cutscenes that push the plot along, and they're all pretty cool and again have some excellent character designs, so scenes that only got still images and some text in the NES version are now fully fleshed out. Plus, the CD soundtrack is pretty good with a few standout tracks that sound great, so with some nice visuals and sound and outstanding gameplay, this is a great way to re-experience the classic that is Double Dragon 2. Check it out. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Download for the PC Engine. This is a 1990 release that was developed and published by NEC Avenue, and it tells the story of Sid, a cyberdiver in the year 2099, who has the ability to jack his brain into computer systems in order to find and fix problems. Problems such as an evil shadow organization trying to take over all of the information systems in the world and establish a Skynet-esque new world order. And this story is conveyed through some very cool looking cutscenes that have a very cyberpunk anime vibe to them in the same vein as games like Snatcher. Far from being a text-heavy adventure though, this is a balls-to-the-wall, white-knuckle, side-scrolling shoot-'em-up that stands up there with some of the better shooters on the console, which is saying a lot. I like that before each stage you have a choice of two different primary weapons, a Vulcan machine gun and a laser cannon, and a handful of sub-weapons including homing missiles and a very nifty energy shield that can actually be shifted to different areas of your ship depending on where the enemy fire is coming from. It's a lot of fun and it can be very challenging, not quite as tough as say R-Type or Gradius 2, but still pretty brutal in spots. Also, since Sid is a cyber diver, some of the stages take place inside of various computer systems, which switches things up quite a bit. So you'll go from fighting fairly predictable enemies in the real world to some very unpredictable enemies in the cyber world, but on the whole, the game is always enjoyable and it's topped off with some very nice graphics and sound, which NEC Avenue were usually good for. So if you're in the market for yet another top-notch shooter on the PC Engine, Download is a perfect choice. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Spriggan Mark II for the PC Engine CD. This is a 1992 release that was jointly developed by Nagzatsoft and Compile, one of the great shoot-em-up developers of their time with games like Musha, 
blazing lasers, and space megaforce under their belt, and interestingly enough, this is the only side-scrolling shooter that they ever developed. It's obviously the sequel to the original Spriggan, but aside from the title, the two games have very little in common, actually. This game ditches the fantasy setting of the original and is instead set in the future when humanity has colonized space and there are wars being waged between the Earth and Mars, with mech suits being the primary weapons for fighting the war, so the plot and setting of this game actually have a lot in common with Gundam. Again, this is a side-scrolling shooter, but you can fire in either direction, which is very useful as enemies will often enter the screen from seemingly random points. You have an energy meter that goes down as you take damage, but if you can avoid taking damage for a short time, your energy will begin to refill itself. You initially use a much weaker mech for the first couple of stages, but are eventually given access to the much better Spriggan Mark II, and from one stage to the next, you're given the choice of a wide selection of sub-weapons, including homing missiles, an energy sword, and a very durable shield, just to name a few. And all of this comes in handy against the legions of enemies and heavily armed boss battles that this game throws at you. The only thing it's missing really is multiplayer, but this is a very fun and multifaceted shooter, and it features some great graphics with lots of scrolling layers, detailed stages and mech designs, and some of the best cutscenes on the console, coupled with a fantastic soundtrack and compelling story, well, you really can't go wrong with Spriggan Mark II, a great shooter from a great developer on a great console. Check it out. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Sun Sun 2 for the PC Engine. This is a 1989 release that was developed and published by NEC Avenue, and it is the direct sequel to the original Sun Sun, which was a side-scrolling arcade game developed by Capcom, but for whatever reason, Capcom actually had nothing at all to do with this game. It has you once again playing as the title character Sun Sun, who you might recognize better as the monkey boy from Marvel vs. Capcom 2 that has an extendable red staff and grows into a fire-breathing giant gorilla. Now where have I heard this one before? Sun Sun 2 is a fairly straightforward platformer, although there is some exploration and item collecting to be done as well. You attack enemies with the aforementioned extendable red staff and collect various fruits and vegetables that are littered around each stage that serve as this game's form of currency. In every stage, there is at least one shop to visit where you can upgrade your staff, buy health power-ups and extra lives, and even some very nifty magic attacks. There are also hidden keys scattered around each stage, which you'll need to find in order to progress further in the game, and there are often other items that you'll need to find before you can take on the boss characters in each stage, such as the Flying Cloud power-up that you'll need to ride on before you can face the boss in Stage 2. Again, it's a fairly simple 2D platformer, and that's exactly how I like them. The gameplay is solid and fun, not frustratingly difficult, but not too easy either, and the graphics and sound design are both pretty good too. Maybe not the best platformer on the console, but definitely no slouch. Sun Sun 2 is well worth playing for fans of the genre. Check it out. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is... Detana Twinbee for the PC Engine. This is a 1992 release that was ported from the 1991 arcade original, and it was also ported to the X68000 as well as the PlayStation and Sega Saturn as part of the Detana Twinbee Yahoo Deluxe Pack. It was developed and published by Konami, and it's set a few years after the events of the original game when Twinbee 
and Winby set out to liberate an alien planet that's under siege from an evil warlord, and this game also introduces the two pilots, Light and Pastel, which I always found kind of weird to think that there are two people inside of ships that are basically alive and should be able to pilot themselves, but what can you do? I guess Twinby and Winby are actually sentient mech suits in that case. The gameplay in Detonaut Twinbee is pretty much the same as in any other game in the series. It's a top-down shooter where you can fire at the enemies in front of you as normal, and you can also throw bombs down at the enemies below you, so it's really the same formula as Xevious, a favorite classic shooter of mine. The main difference with the gameplay here is the multicolored bell power-up system that some people love and some people hate because the bells change color whenever you shoot them, making it tricky to get the specific power-up that you want, which include things like speed up, and energy shield, and options that follow around your ship, and increase your firepower. So it's a little divisive, but I personally love the power-up system, and the overall gameplay in this game, and the entire series for that matter. Plus, this is a beautiful game with bright, colorful graphics, lots of pastel colors, smooth gameplay, and a fantastic poppy soundtrack that I like a lot. So with all of that considered, if you're in the market for a great shooter on the PC Engine that crosses over into cute -em up territory, check out Detana Twinby. It's awesome. Hey everybody, Jim here with your daily dose of Japanese gaming goodness. It is the import game of the day, and today's game is City Hunter for the PC Engine. This is a 1989 release that was developed and published by Sunsoft, and it's based on the series of manga and anime of the same name that centers around the Playboy private investigator Ryo Saiba. Along with his cohorts, he works to rid Tokyo of crime, which includes solving murders, saving damsels in distress, all the way up to bringing down crime syndicates hell-bent on taking over the city. It's a pretty good manga overall, and there's even a Hong Kong film adaptation starring Jackie Chan, which is also pretty damn cool. This game, in a nutshell, is kind of like Rolling Thunder, but it has a bigger emphasis on exploration. In every stage, there will be tons of enemies to take out with an assortment of weapons, including your standard handgun, machine guns, and even a rocket launcher. But more than just killing bad guys, you'll need to enter every single door you come across because inside could be keys to unlock other areas of the stage, hostages to rescue, or half-naked women to perv on, which incidentally refills your health. So each stage is a bit of a maze, so while there's plenty of action to enjoy, you really need to keep track of which doors you've already tried and which ones contain which items and so on, which can be a little confusing since the stages are quite large and contain a lot of doors. There's plenty of backtracking and trial and error, but overall this is a pretty fun action title with lots of bad guys to blow away, obstacles to dodge, and mysteries to solve. Plus, this is a pretty nice looking game for 1989 and does a really good job of capturing the look and feel of the anime, as does the soundtrack, which kind of has a chiptune city pop sound to it. So if you're looking for a decent action title for your PC engine, a few rocket launchers and scantily clad women thrown in for good measure, check out City Hunter, it's awesome. 